This year was the 80th anniversary of D-Day and I'm currently walking at Beaulieu Airfield. You might in a moment see some model aircraft being flown behind me. But on June the 6th, which was D-Day 1944, on that very day, two men who left from these runways were killed in action. And in fact, the whole month of June, um, 12 men were killed in total whilst flying from here. But June 1944 wasn't the worst month in terms of death toll from RF Beaulieu here. That rather grim and unwanted record goes to August of 1943. In that month, 23 Czechoslovak airmen and six Canadian airmen who left these runways would be killed. That makes 29 men in total. I've covered some of those incidents before, but what I wanted to do this week was honour those men who died in August, because I'm filming this in August, 81 years after those 29 men lost their lives. So I decided to meet up with my good friend Richard Reeves, and we walked to one of those crash sites, and we put down a wooden memorial cross in their memory, and also just wanted to tell their story a little bit. It's certainly fair to say that August of 1943 was the darkest month in RF Bewley's history. <laughs> Okay, so we can start to see trees that are like bent and a bit dead. Yeah. So yeah. suspicion is that the aircraft, the Liberator, crashed into those trees and on the way down in Imagine there, the wings get taken off. So you can see there's this one here, this very dead looking one with a bit of greenery and there's a completely dead one behind that. There used to be more, but they've since fallen down. Yeah. So uh, yeah, we just got to follow that direction and... Uh, so follow the dead trees yeah, and the bent, and de bent debris. It's mad that it's like that 80, 81 years later, isn't it? Yeah, and there was, there's eight men on board, they all got killed immediately in the crash, don't they? Yeah, don't I mean, so, yeah so what you've got, we're basically we're coming up a slight slope here. We're on the upper side of the valley. Yep. And the aircraft is coming up on the north-south runway. And uh, as it, as it um, was running down the runway, it actually got airborne with insufficient flight speed. Some aircraft could deal with that, um, but not liberate it so, so well. And so it gets a bit airborne but then struggles to clear the bomb dumps coming over the over the trees um, and then fails to maintain its attitude. It just, you know, it's, they've just lifted what flight speed they had to clear the trees and then the aircraft is basically on a very slow stall and it's basically sinking back down. Of course, it's coming into the valley, so it's sort of fairly safe on this side, but as it crosses the valley, of course, then it's still going down. Um, and the valley is rising on the other side and basically it just flew in at a very low level and um, yeah, came in through the trees, which is why you've got this dead oak tree here, another dead oak tree behind. There's actually a few more that have fallen down. Wow. And um, yeah, look? let's go up there and that's just okay, mate. straight to the front. And there's one of those trees there, right? Yeah, there's a level, they sort of beat up one there, but that might be a more recent one, that, that's a beach, but that one's certainly Okay. See this tree here? survived but it's very mangled and slightly bent over. Yeah yeah yeah. So the aircraft touched down somewhere in which is Well we can start to see a bit of clearance now can't we on the ground? Yeah um, I'll go this way. Yeah. And it, here. Yeah, it's not growing is it? Yeah. So you can see how bare the ground is. So the burnt aluminium has poisoned the soil, therefore we don't grow. Yeah. Um, so this is part of it. it obviously, in a, a crash with a load of depth charges off, wreckage is scattered everywhere. Interestingly, there's a tree up there. I wonder if there'll be anything in the roots. Might be worth looking well, at. Ah, and there we go. So big chunks. You see how big the fire was? Because this aluminium is just completely melted down. It's sort of worked into the into the actual soil and yeah. Crikey. So we spent 20 minutes having a little bit of a look around um, and there are very tiny bits of surface debris still here. And I will say at this point, we don't metal detect. It's, it's not permitted to metal detect on the forest and we certainly wouldn't be metal detecting on what effectively is a crash site where, where men died. But just for interest purposes, we'll show you just what we did manage to find. Bits like this. 81 years later and that's the type of aircraft they would have been flying when they came down here. So what we've also done, we've brought a, a small cross with the names of the airmen on and a, 
a, a bouquet flower from the Free Czechoslovak um, Air Force Associates. Um, we're going to put this down, take a few photos so we can send it to uh, those organisations who might be interested in it. Um, we won't leave the plastic bouquet here, obviously, because it's not very biodegradable. August, as far as I can tell, was the worst month for aircraft yeah, yeah. leaving Bewley. Yeah, well, it's, it's not so much for aircraft, for the for the actual people well, because obviously you know they were losing a lot more aircraft but one aircraft to the liberator and that's eight people well exactly so, it's so 13th of august there's that sway accident and that involves that is it the wellington with the six canadians on the wellington and the, the yeah, halifax with the halifax of 502 squadron so the wellington that's six men yeah the wellington had um, been diverted to bewley because of bad weather from shivenor ex exited bewley um bewley circuit without doing the um proper uh, the proper exit procedure. Okay. And um, that's what caused it. Well, then on 21st of August, you have eight Czech Slovaks over the Bay of Biscay. Yep. 29th of August, eight men again from the Czech Slovaks, which is here. And then the 30th of August, Andrei Šimek, the gunner, he dies. And then that same that's day, six men come down in a liberator at Dilton Cops. And that's that's a pr problematic one because they actually lost, I think they lost a number of pilots on that one. I'm not sure exactly, but they, they, that was a training flight. They were doing corkscrew manoeuvres, which is what you do to evade um, evade things like JU-88s when you're being attacked in submarine manoeuvres with a big aircraft. That's it, Gives you what By doing that, it gives you, allows you to get more guns on target. So we've just put the uh, wooden cross and the bouquet down, and Richard was just making a comment about the flight of the aircraft as it came into this wooded area. Yeah, so you can see a couple of the damaged trees um, there, the ones that have been basically either damaged or killed and then you've got the one the large oak tree here which was just glanced he's had some of it some damage taken but never actually went down yeah so um, yeah basically straight through here and we're tr stood here on the crash site now thanks richard what type of deer is it from fallow deer fallow deer let's have yeah, a closer look that is awesome yeah. I just thought I'd have a look right around because obviously when the small car crashes, especially when it's got explosives on board, a lot of stuff gets thrown quite a long way. So, you know, we're a fair distance from the, from the actual main impact site. Obviously, when an aircraft hits the ground, the aircraft tends to break up. The heavier bits like the engines tend to roll across the ground if it's at a shallow angle um, until they hit something or they, they um, come, to a, come to a stop on their own, under their own uh, momentum. Yeah. So you, um, but the, you know, bits like wings can spin off, and you know, bits of sort of smaller wreckage just sort of fly off and land anywhere, right, right, right yeah. way around. So, and, and these trees that have come down that we're seeing now, these when were these ones planted? Do you think? Well, these would have been planted after the war. Yeah. Just after the war, yeah. Okay. So, uh, is that, are they fir, they're fir trees, aren't they? Douglas fir. Yeah. Douglas fir. Okay. Yeah. Wow. I mean, when the Heinkel 111 got shot down at uh, shot down at Pilly, their tail was found weeks later. Really? And that was it, I still hung up in the trees. <laughs>